and spotlight is on Tony Alain. Oh, is it me? Am I on? <laughs> yes. Oh. What you what you're not looking for into the award-winning images? Uh, well, actually, um, Dasha, um, hi everybody, and um, thanks Joe Baker for that wonderful plug of uh, Tony Alain pictures. <laughs> um, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Um, Dasha, now that's an interesting question uh, that needs to be answered. Um, but I think um, the easiest thing for me to do is to, is to um, explain what I'm actually looking for, not what I'm not looking for. Uh, that would be a bit too, uh, uh, that, you know, I'd come up with all sorts of crazy ideas. But, but what I, as a judge, I, uh, there are certain, there's certain criteria that I, that I sort of stick to, I try to stick to anyway. And um, I've had the, the pleasure and sometimes the pain of judging, I, I guess in 2020 and, and even in this year, 2021, I think I've judged at least a dozen exhibitions, online exhibitions, which has been, uh, which has been great fun. Um, and also it's been very rewarding for me because I'd get to see uh, uh, works of art from all over the world um but but i i guess that, that what like you you all know that I, that basically i'm a landscape painter um uh, um that's where my passion is of course um and that's why i became an artist however uh i still enjoy um to look at work by um portrait artists uh, by uh, wildlife painters um, uh, surrealist painters, and also um, photorealism, um, which I, I admire uh, uh, the, the skills and and the the insight of what people can can see. Um, but I think all art, whether it be um, uh, music, um, uh, theatre, literature, or, or the visual arts, I think should have some uh, basic and important ingredients and I, and I always list the three ingredients you may have heard me mention this before but but I, I think it's very important and and um, apart from obviously, um, a good composition uh, a good use of uh, values uh, and color and perspective uh, um, the ability to draw uh, the ability to to um, uh, I mean, to me, drawing is the is the ABC. Excuse me, the ABC of painting. It's the language of painting, um, and so apart from all of those obvious uh, attributes that that we need to look at, or I need to look at as a judge, um, there are three really basic ingredients that I that I really uh, look for, uh, and um, not in any order, but but it's um, it's uh, revelation, celebration. Uh, and communication. Uh, when I mean uh, revelation, I mean it, I, I think I think an artist um, should have their world or their surroundings reveal itself to them uh, through their painting, so that they can then reveal it onto onto others. Um, and so, uh, I, and I always try to do that when when I'm painting, whether it's in the studio or whether it's on location. Um, and um, and I think uh, communication, obviously, uh, once you've once an artist has, has taken in uh, the, their world or, the, or their their concept, their vision, then they should be able to communicate. And I think a, a painting, especially a, a two dimensional, three dimensional, two dimensional painting, should communicate with its public uh, in the way that the artist may have seen their world or their vision or their or whatever it is that, that they choose to paint. And so those are the two most important uh, criteria that I look for. Um, and of course, the last one is the celebration. And I think all art should be celebrated, again, whether it be music, theatre, writing, uh, uh, literature, uh, painting, uh, sculpture, it should be celebrated. We should be able to celebrate, um, uh, you know, the world about us, the natural world, um, um, the human figure, for instance, um, and even uh, 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 innate objects like in still lives uh, and, and abstract. Um, 
I, I, I do enjoy looking at, um, at abstract work, although I'm not, I, I'm definitely not, uh, not a, uh, an expert on, on, uh, on that, in that genre, but, but I do enjoy looking, because I like to explore, I like to be, I want to be drawn into a painting. I want the artist to, to involve me in their work. I want to see work that allows me maybe to, to fall into the painting and to fill in maybe some of the details that, that the artist has left out. So, uh, and so that's why I think, you know, those three, those three important um, uh, items in the recipe of, uh, I, I, uh, invite me into the painting, invite the viewer into the painting. I mean, how many times have we been to an exhibition um, especially a live exhibition and seeing, you know, there may be two or 300 pieces on the wall, um, but I'm sure we've all done it. Uh, um, we've walked past works of art that catch our eye and we tend to, even when across the room, we tend to always look back and find that piece. And, and it's, just, it's the, I think those are the three items, uh, the three bits of magic that keep calling the viewer back to say, look at me, I'm celebrating, I'm communicating, and I'm revealing my world to you. Uh, so those are the sort of things that I look for in a painting. Um, what not to look for in a painting? Well, that's a very dangerous area for me to go in to. Um, oh dear, um, I'm not gonna even think about going down that road because I would not like to offend anybody uh, and, put myself in such a position but, but that's why I, I um, um, when I look and when I do judging uh, I must admit if I do an online judging through show submit um, I will spend possibly I get usually get about 14 days from start to finish and and I genuinely hand on heart will go to my computer every single day and run through the whole process day in, day out for the next 14 days. So I give myself the opportunity to be fair. And I also, hopefully I'm fair to the, to the award winners because uh, um, some, uh, some paintings end up in, in my award winning box, others don't. And then the next day I go through all the award winners and then I go through all the unaward winners and sometimes they get moved around and so and so it is a long long process for me to go through um, so there is no secret to um, how to win a, a first prize um, I was very lucky to have um, that painting win an award um, actually it's won two awards um, and this was a sort of a, this was a, almost a plein air painting. It's, it's just down the road from where I'm at the studio. Uh, this is Benny Beggs here, uh, framed up a 20 by 26 or something like that. Um, but uh, I was very pleased with the painting because uh, if you go to the scene here that's not got the snow and it's just a regular, uh, a regular wet and drainy day, you would drive past and walk past this farm many, many times without noticing it. Uh, um, but it revealed itself to me on that particular morning uh, while I was there and I stood in the road. Uh, and Thankfully, it wasn't the road wasn't busy because it was eight inches of snow uh, and I did my sketching. And, and I came back to the studio and created that painting. So that's what I'm talking about. You get the, the uh, you know, I've got the, the revelation, it revealed itself to me. And then I wanted to communicate what I saw that, that day to, to the, the rest of the planet. Um, so there's the, hopefully that will help you. I'm not gonna tell you to go out and paint um, uh, three, uh, uh, three lovely uh, chickens that are, you know, are happy feeding on corn or, or um, a still life with uh, drooping grapes and lobsters and what have you on a big silver chalice, uh, or even a lady who sits there with her arms crossed and she can, and every time you see her, she, her eyes follow you around and her name is Mona. I can't tell you that those are the sort of paintings that you should be painting. But what I can say is that um, you must paint from the heart. I think it must come from within. I think you must be able to 
um, use, think about those three items that I've said, mentioned in my, what I call my recipe for, for a good piece of artwork. Um, and, and be true to yourself, paint and, and basically exhibit what you think is your best painting that you've done recently. That's what it's all about. You mustn't think, ah, I'm Tony Allen. Oh yeah, well, he's a bit of a loose landscape painter. Yeah, he likes a bit of color. So let's do a bit of that. That might not wash, you see, all the time. So, um, and you know, I've thought about that many times when I enter a show. Oh yeah, so and so. Oh yeah, Jackson Pollock. Well, I better do an abstract. I think that yeah, he might like that. Um, so uh, please paint what you paint in your style, your best painting that you can produce for that particular week or a show. Um, you'll be surprised because. Um, um, don't go out and think to yourself, I'm going to have to paint my best painting tomorrow. And you keep trying. The more you try, I think, the, the worse it becomes. I think if you just keep painting, you keep painting, then all of a sudden you'll look at your little collection. You might have half a dozen pieces and you think, darn it, that's a good painting. That worked really well for me. I'm happy with that. You know, that that's spoken to me. That's communicated with me. Let's hope it communicates with somebody else. Uh, I could go on for ages and ages, but um, I hope that um, that there's one or two pointers there that will help you in in your future work. Um, it, so, so there's. Let's talk about it. The first thing is you paint from the heart, from within. You must paint what you paint, what Mister Artist or Mrs Artist or Miss Artist. You paint what you paint, and you paint to the best of your ability. Think about um, about how the world reveals itself to you or your subject, how it reveals itself to you so that you can paint it and reveal it and communicate with others. And then also the, the last thing is you celebrate. You celebrate the, the, the subject that you've painted. You celebrate the, you know, the world around you, the, the, the natural world, the human figure, uh, whatever it is you're painting, it, it should be a celebration. Um, and those are the three things that always tick over in my head when I'm a judge. End of lecture, I think. I've got something here that says... End. Okay. Any questions? I hope not, because... Oh. I, mean, I even muted your, uh, myself so I wouldn't interrupt this beautiful speech. Thank you so much. Can you give an to... three criteria? Well, Sharon, that's a... Uh, well, I, I think... Uh, let me just move that. Where is Sharon? Uh, oh, there she is. Um, well, Sharon, I, I think um, I think it was easy enough for me to mention about this particular painting. Uh, uh, yes. how it, how it, Actually... Uh, I thought you did a good job of explaining the um, the first one, Revelation, on that painting. Can you do celebration and also communication for the same painting? Yeah, I, I think so, because, um, you, you know, I think I said on a regular day, I, you just drive past this place. Right, right. Because of the snow that was there and the shadows and the time of day, and it was a revelation to me to see it. I thought, Wow, look at this. Benny, I've never noticed Benny Beggs Farm before. You know, I just okay. keep past it. It's full of cow muck and what have you. But but it was just the perfect situation for that. And it was early morning. Um, and so yes, it revealed itself to me. Uh, and and I wanted to to get back home to the studio pretty quickly after doing lots of sketches to paint it. Um and so it, and I felt that it was, and I said to my wife, listen, I brought it down to the studio. I said, you need to see this because tell me where, where that is. And she said, I'm not quite sure. I said, that's Benny Beggs, just around the corner, just along the road. And she looked at it and she said, my God, I didn't realize that the avenue of trees leading up to the farm. And it was, everything was there. You know, it made a great, it made a great bit. So I celebrated in the simple fact that this, that this everyday subject um, that had revealed itself to me and, and with the use of values, colour, tone, perspective, um, and, uh, and the, the ability to draw it, of course, uh, and to, you know, to compose it, 
that I could uh, celebrate that, you know, the Benny Beggs farm. Uh, I wonder if the farmer, he probably hasn't seen it, he's probably till out milking his cows, but I wonder if he would say, well, actually, well, my farm looks pretty good, you know, in the snow. Um, yeah. But, um, th th I hope that's answered your question, Sharon. It's it's difficult, um, but 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 when I do look at works of art and I judge, I do have this in the back of my mind, you know, does that speak to me? Does that, does this image, this painting or whatever it is, or this piece of sculpture, does it communicate with me? Um, can I see that, first of all, can I see the skill? I, I mentioned, we mentioned before the skill, uh, um, uh, uh, the composition, um, the perspective, you know, all the technical things has to come into it as well. Um, and that's where, when I judge, of course, I say, I do say that I go backwards and forwards each day and, and I look at, you know, all of these, all of these issues in my recipe, but I also look at, hey, now this is a good composition. You know, it's very easy to slip over when you're judging, when you're looking at, say, I mean, I did the Dakota Arts uh, uh, summer, I think it was the summer show, there was 1100 paintings I had to go through. That's all. Yes. A lot of paintings and that's why it took me at least two weeks every single day and you know you tend to miss a few things and that's why I keep going back and say actually I need to look at each one really you know objectively and and, and check it all out because there are some you think that is a good composition my god look at the values in that one you know so uh, it, it's it's um I like to be fair I, I really like to be fair and and, uh, you, you know, I, I'm a, a, a fairly loose uh, uh, and um, uh, impressionistic painter. But I mean, some of my awards have been of photorealist work and portraits. And I can appreciate um, the quality that that artists can produce, especially when they're not painting in the same genre as me. And so... Um, and I think it's probably because I've been painting for the last 58 years, I guess, every day. And I've <laughs> uh, 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 amassed a certain skill uh, of, um, of seeing work. The other thing that uh, um, I'm not very good at remembering people's names, um, Karen, uh, but what I am good at is I have a good memory recall for images. And I know, and I have seen over the many years I've been judging, I have seen work that I know has been copied from the classics. And I look, I say, I know that painting. I can go straight to the library and find that painting. And so, uh, so it's very, um, they can't, uh, I've got this, like I say, I, I've got this amazing ability to remember paintings. You know, I go through books and magazines and art, like we all do, and and I, it sort of goes in there. You know, I forget people's names, of course, but images seem to stay locked in here. And there's one or two, and I'm it, this is I'm going back at least six or seven years that that I've seen a work of art. Uh, I didn't judge it, but I, I saw it and I thought that surely, surely that's not an original. I know it's not an original. I've got. I've got it in my book here somewhere, you know, and I and I said to my wife, "Look, see that? It's in the book here. It's painted by I don't know. We'll say Chagall or whatever, and there it is. It's just won a prize. So, right. uh, be honest with yourselves, you know. Paint, right. paint from within. It's very important. You paint what Sharon Fry paints, or you paint what Liz Wayner paints, or you paint what Cindy Gillett or Tony Allen or Dasher. You paint from within. I think it's very very important." We've had um, other artists that talked about their judging and a lot of them say that when they first get all the images, they sort of look for big shapes initially and um, sort of pick out those paintings that sort of jump out with big shapes, uh, big distinguished shapes first. Is that an issue with you or no? No, it's not, no, it's not an issue, Shan. I, I, I tell you, the first thing that hits me is the skill, the drawing, and the of and the the ability to to draw the object or the shape or the landscape, and also 
the way the values and the colors can relate to each other. That's really important to me. That's what I really look at straight away. You know, I, it's like you flip through uh, and you go, wow, that is really good. I mean, there was, I did, I, I judged uh, an exhibition um, no more than four weeks ago. And there was one particular painting. It was just a little portrait. And when it hit my screen, it really leapt out at me. And I could see the colors and the values of this portrait, the way the person, you could, I could tell it was done from life. I, it's just wasn't from a photograph. I knew it was done from life. And I looked at this painting and I kept seeing it. And it really, really spoke to me because, because of the way the subject, the person had painted this portrait there was lots of lost and found edges. There was just the important detail that hit the eyeball, the color that was in the face. And it was, it was, it was just an amazing painting. Uh, and, and I flipped through and of course I went through the, the other 200 paintings. Um, uh, but I know in the back of my mind, that one's gonna come somewhere. And then I go, oh my God, there's, a, there's a, another painting here now. This is a landscape. Oh, now look at the quality of draftsmanship and the way the values, again, the values are set just pitched perfectly. And so that gets put into the memory box. So, um, and, and I think, um, you know, it is painting from the heart. You, I, you, I can really tell when, when artists have put everything there and they've got into it. And that's when I say painting from the heart, choose your best work that you, you the author, have created not that you've seen other people paint you know it's very easy oh my god I mean you, know, you say oh god yeah well so and so painted like that so I, I think I would just have to do a subject very similar to that I think that's the wrong way to go I think you need to paint but, uh, because it um, will all Tony, I have a couple of questions. Thank you so much for sharing. I have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one is in regards to your painting. Kerry is asking, how many sketches did you do while on site? What made you decide which one to paint? So it's a question about your piece. Oh, right. Oh, uh, oh what happened there? What's going on? Um, Something's just come up on my screen, but I, I don't. Uh, I'm trying to find my, my sketchbook of, of, it probably was just three, three sketches, three, three thumbnails. Uh, I got the wrong sketchbook out. Um, well, uh, just one moment, Dasha. I, I seem to have lost Zoom. Oh, here we are. I'm back again now. Zoom did you. Um, uh, so this one here, yeah, it, I did about three thumbnails, three sketches. Uh, I want to say thumbnails. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, oh, here, I'm doing this backwards. Uh, um, you know, these are sort of, sort of like value sketches here. So I did about three of them. And um, uh, Thank you, Tony. And uh, there is more on sketching and sketching and gouache in our upcoming workshop. One for April 8th is sold out with Tony Allen. Uh, but we have uh, kind of like interest list going on. If you want to be on early bird notice, please RSVP to the future catching class, the one who doesn't have a date set, and he will be first to know when next one is happening. Okay.